stellar evolution is mainly how this the cycles of the star how stars are formed and what are the sequence these stars follows when they move from main sequence to different types of stars so first we can categorize the star in terms of temperature if the surface temperature of star can uh, be used to determine the color of the light which it, it is emitting out like if it's a very hot star the hottest star so it tend to emit out, out light in blue region when it is a cold star then it emit out light in a red region we have violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red that is actually in terms of energy as well as we move from violet to red the energy is decreasing so as the temperature decreases the energy which is emitted out from the star is also decreasing these are the spectral types which we call like we say spectral type o star b a f g k n m then hertzsprung and russell diagram shows the variation of the luminosity or flux with reference to the temperature so in this one the axis x axis it is decreasing 4000 2000 half every time it's half and this is representing a scale of or a magnitude basically and this is a magnitude compared to sun we are comparing with reference to sun that's why zero or one will be there it's like same like sun so in this region we will have a cold bright star on the top right and bottom right we'll have a cold and dim star on the bottom left we'll have hot and dim star and bottom and the top left we'll have hot and bright stars this is also representing the positions of different stars so you will find like here this is our sun region that even the star temperature is low but their luminosity is high why luminosity is high because of their large size then we have blue stars or blue giant super giants are there in this region white dwarfs they have high temperature but because of small size they are having a lower luminosity and them stars are there and stars which are having a low mass they are likely to remain in a main sequence for a longer period of time so life of star we divide into proto star pre main sequence main sequence and post main sequence so proto star basically what happen all the like hydrogen helium they collide they join together and starting of the collision causing the partic uh, the gravity is causing the particles to come closer to each other then it become a pre main the gravitational collapse the proto star continue to become opaque at, and it will absorb infrared radiation it will not allow infrared radiation to escape so it create two things one is radiation pressure another one is gravitational pressure then it turn into a main sequence star then star continue to increase in temperature eventually sufficient amount of uh, heat is released and that cause a hydrogen fuse like continuously what is happening increase in temperature it will become sufficiently hot so it undergo a nuclear fusion of hydrogen and when hydrogen nuclear fusion started it releases energy and the energy radiated by the star is balances with the so radiation pressure balances with the gravitational pressure that is why the size of the star is not changing but the radiation pressure outward from the core of a star balances with so the pressure tend to collapse the star so increase so the size is constant here but what happen in a post main sequence once the hydrogen is used up in the core so now there is no equilibrium or balance so the as the core contract the gravitational potential energy causes an increase in temperature potential energy change to kinetic so temperature increases and that increase in temperature cause helium fusion and when it is start to cause a helium fusion it release energy and it turn into red giant then the depth of the star it depends on like eventually a helium is exhaust in core of red giant and it collapse again what happen next is depending on the size of the star you may have 
a mass of a core this is a mass of core less than uh, 1.5 the solar mass or ma mass total mass of a main sequence mass below the five solar masses like compared to five times the mass of the sun that is less than that so what happened that type of stars as they emitting out or turning into red giant when the hydrogen fusion helium fusion started so it again releases the energy and very small and hot dense star is produced that is the white dwarf which cools gradually and become dimmer and if we have a mass of a core between 1.5 to 3 solar masses or 5 to 15 times the solar mass then what happened further thermonuclear reaction take place and first the carbon burned and then the other element so we will reach a red giant uh, turn into blue giant and then there is a supernova which result in a formation of neutron star or a black hole likely the black holes are formed when the mass is about 15 times and here it is forming a neutron star but uh, you are not dividing these two in, into like three parts you are just learning two one, two parts one is a low mass star low mass star produce white dwarfs and high mass or massive star produce basically black holes and neutron star and the lifespan of the star on the main sequence determined by the mass more mass is there short lifetime on a main sequence because the rate at which they undergo a fusion that is at a faster rate so they consume all of their fuel from the fusion so our sun is at this position likely it will be a red giant and it will be turned into white dwarf So this was about the part uh, which was related to the evolution, stellar evolution, or changes the sequence of the star. So low mass star, they will turn into white dwarfs, and high mass or massive star, black hole and neutron stars. 